Welcome to the Smart League Software Setup and Overview. Here is what we will cover in this session. The Smart League software is programming software for the Smart Living panels. This software is freely downloadable from the Nest website and can be used to completely program the Smart Living panel range. The software can also be used to control panels, view system status and diagnostics. Connection to the panel can be directly via USB or RS232 or via IP via the SmartLAN module. Both the GSM and telephone dialer allow remote programming via a modem. The software is simple to use and offers more convenient programming than the system keypad. The latest version of the Smart League software can be downloaded from the Nest website. Just click the Smart Living menu and choose Control Panels. Select any of the panel options, then select the Downloads tab and download the software. The Smart League software supports all current versions of Windows. Simply run the installation and install as normal and contact Nest Technical Support if any problems occur. Once installed, you will find an icon on the desktop. Looking at the main screen of the software, we start here with recently opened solutions. This lists any projects that have recently been opened. We can then open or create new solutions here. Below the project browser are PDF manuals for the hardware and software, and FAQ and contact links at the bottom. When the computer has an internet connection, the direct line web page will be displayed. This displays latest firmware and software updates as well as information on the Smart Living panel. Open solutions are displayed in tabs at the top of the software. Multiple solutions can be opened at the same time. The left window displays the system programming tree. The System Layout tab allows modules to be added to the system. The Programming window displays configuration options for the items selected in the tree. A solution is a file or project for the job. To create a new solution, simply click New Solution from either of these locations. Next, select the control panel being used for the solution. Note that all new projects should use a version 6 firmware, version 5 is for older panels. If version 6 is not available in your software, you may need to update. Once the solution has been created, you then need to click save to save it to the database. Fill in the details for the solution and note that the installation code field is not for the installer's code, but a solution database number starting at zero. It is possible to manage, import, export, delete and convert solutions between different computers and panel types. The import-export feature allows projects to be exported individually as single files or as a group for backup or to carry over to another computer. Converting allows a project to be upconverted to allow it to be loaded into a bigger system. This is designed to allow a simple upgrade of a system such as a 515 to a bigger system such as the 1050. You cannot backwards convert. Converting also allows a project designed for an older system to be upgraded to a newer system firmware. To delete a solution, click Open to list all the solutions and then select the one to delete and click the Remove button. From this screen you can also search for solutions or open the conversion wizard. To convert a solution, click Open to list all solutions and then select the one to convert. Click the Conversion Wizard button and then select the panel type and the firmware to convert to. The solution will be converted to a new format and will be saved as a new file, preserving the original one. To export solutions, select Database and then select Export. Select the solutions to be exported and selecting multiple solutions will create a single file containing all solutions. Each solution requires approximately 13 megabytes. Enter a name and click Save to export. To import a solution, 
select database and then select import from the menu. Click the read list button and then locate the exported XML project file. All contained solutions will be listed allowing individual importing. Once imported the solution appears in the Smart League database list. Before programming we need to configure the connection method to the panel. There are several ways to connect to a Smart Living panel. The onboard serial port allows direct programming via RS-232. This requires your PC to have an RS-232 programming lead. The Alien touchscreen keypads include a USB connector which can also be used to program the panel. This is a built-in USB to RS-232 converter and requires manual driver installation for this connection method. If a Smart LAN module is installed, the panel can be programmed via an IP network connection. The built-in dialer and the Nexus GSM module allow remote programming via a modem. Each solution remembers the connection method used, so a solution needs to be opened first to set the connection requirements. Connection via RS-232 requires a null modem RS-232 crossover cable. This then connects to an RS-232 programming lead. To set up an RS-232 connection, open a solution and then ensure that your RS-232 lead is installed and connected. Select the settings menu, then select application data, ensure the connection type is set to serial, then select the COM port number from the serial port list. Click OK to save the settings. Both the 4 and 7 inch Alien touchscreen keypads have a built in USB programming port. This port can be used to program both the keypad itself and also the panel. Manual driver installation is required and a USB to mini USB cable is required to connect to the keypad. To install the USB drivers to connect via the touchscreen keypads, connect the PC via USB to a keypad. Then click the start menu and right click on computer. Select properties and then open the device manager. Locate the uninstalled COM port and then right click and select update driver. Choose the option browse my computer for drivers. Then locate the folder drivers within the Smart League software folder. Click continue if prompted with the security warning. A new COM port should now be created for the keypad's USB. Take note of the new COM port number and select this as the new COM port to connect to in the Smart League software. To connect via LAN, the panel requires a Smart LAN module. These are installed on the main board by removing the bottom left hand screw and installing the screw post. Fit the LAN board to the RS-232 port and install the screw through the LAN board. Set jumper J16 to the one position to power up the module. Access to the panel via the LAN module must be enabled in the user programming of the keypad. Press OK followed by a user code. Scroll down to activations and then scroll down to the option internet access. Use the check on button to set this option on and press OK to save. To connect to the panel on the default IP address, you must first set your PC to the same IP range. The SmartLAN G module requires a username and password to connect. Changes can be made once connected. If you are unsure about working with network connections, consult a professional to assist. Start by directly connecting your PC to the LAN module. On your PC, open up the Network and Sharing Center. This can be located by typing in network in the Windows search. Click the local area connection to open the network status screen. Select network properties, then open internet protocol version four. Enter in a network address that is in the same range as the panel's address, such as shown on screen. In the Smart League software, open a Smart League solution, then select application data. Select the required SmartLAN G or S module and then enter the IP address of the panel. 
Enter in a username and password if required. The defaults required are displayed on screen. Click the connection check button and then verify the connection. Both a ping and a communication should succeed to connect. If a ping fails, that means the panel cannot be located at the entered address. Check the address has been entered correctly and check the PC is set to the same address range. If a ping is successful, but a communication fails, the panel is online but cannot communicate. Check the username and password are correct and also check that internet access is enabled in the system keypad. At the top of the Smart League software are global upload download buttons in the toolbar. These will upload and download all options from the panel. Select either upload or download and then select the options to synchronize. Data is only sent when send or receive buttons have been clicked. Each page has send and receive buttons to allow synchronizing of just that page. Changes are synced only when the send and receive buttons are clicked. The system must be in a disarmed state to send data. A quick reboot occurs each time data is sent to the control panel. The system layout screen displays modules available for inclusion in your solution. As you add devices to your solution, they are removed from the system layout screen. Double click any item to manually add it to a solution. Uploading from a panel that has modules installed and enrolled will add attached expansion modules automatically from the system layout. If this page is uploaded and the modules attached to your system are not added to your solution, then they are not enrolled. The programming tree lists modules at the top of the tree with the ability to configure each module. System configurations are found under the Smart Living System Configuration tree. Click on an item to display the settings in the right hand window. To remove any of the modules, right click on a module and select remove. In the top menu, the option check control panel opens the software monitoring window. The monitoring window allows live monitoring and operation of the system. From here, you can view system keypads, control area arming, view zone status and peripheral status, view system faults, operate outputs, and view the Nexus GSM status. The remote keypad monitor allows view and control of LCD keypads. Click refresh to update the display of the keypad. Pressing the buttons will operate the keypad itself. Touchscreen keypads display status, but do not have remote control. The control panel status button displays useful system diagnostics and fault information. System troubles and faults are marked with a fault icon. The partition monitor displays the status of each partition and allows arming and disarming functions. A user code is required to arm and disarm partitions from the software. The installer's code cannot be used for arm and disarm. The zones monitor window displays the status of zones with the ability to bypass, while outputs are also displayed with the ability to control. A user code is required to bypass zones and control outputs, and the code must be enabled for bypassing and output control. The timers monitor window displays any active timers in the system. The peripherals window displays attached devices and any current faults. The sounders window displays the status of any attached IV programmable sirens. The iBus isolator window displays voltage from attached bus isolators. This can be useful to monitor voltage for part of a system. The walk test window allows testing of all the security zones with the ability to print a report. As zones are tested, a date and time stamp is recorded. The power monitor window allows power monitoring for the 1050 and 10100 panels. 